Bonjour everyone, welcome to another episode, another diecast showcase. Um, I'm going to do today a uh, another little uh, uh, peg find videos. Um, found a few few things in the last uh, in the last couple weeks, basically. So I uh, thought I'd uh, show those uh, to you today. So uh, basically, I'm going to have a little mix of. Uh, uh, mostly Hot Wheels, with a touch of match bo uh, Matchbox uh, thrown in. So uh, basically, uh, first thing that uh, I wanted to showcase today was uh, the arrival of the second wave of Hot Wheels uh, Ultra Hots. So um, pretty happy about the second wave um, in one regards. Uh, there's actually um, a little bit more variety. Uh, in regards to the cast that uh, have been shown. So first one that uh, I picked up, I picked up a three out of the series of eight, which is kind of funny because that's exactly what I ended up doing with the uh, other wave. So first one I showed is a casting that I wanted to get my hands on for a while. Not necessarily this exact edition, but this casting, which I find is really interesting. So as you can see, we're talking about the 74 Brazilian Dodge Charger. So Dodge Charger in Brazil was actually based on um, the um, uh, Dodge Dart uh, that was uh, launched in the 60s. Or, yeah, Dodge Dart, uh, you know, Plymouth Duster, um, and it became the Dodge Demon and whatnot. So that kind of body style. Um, I forget, uh, it's not an A body, maybe a B body. I'm not exactly sure which, uh, which it is, but... Uh, Again, um, you know, uh, pretty interesting cast. You kind of recognize the shape and the size of the dart, but it's got the um, 68 uh, style, uh, actually a mix of, you know, 67, 68, 69 uh, charger front end. Instead of the circular round lights, it's got, it's got some hideaway, uh, hideaway front lights. Um, as with the other uh, Ultra Hot series, uh, first series, uh, these are fully detailed. Um, the ones that I picked up this time all do have the uh, Ultra Hot wheels, and of course, you still have that nice Spectra Flame paint. Uh, now, mind you, at time of filming, it's pretty damn dark, and uh, winter is pretty much started up here in Montreal, so. Let's just say that uh, there's a little bit of lacking, but I hope you can make out this really, really nice. Uh, Spectra Flame, I'd say, I'm going to say it's gonna, kind of like a copper color, uh, you know, a brownish orange or whatnot, so really cool, um, it's got the gold hot ones, and, um, you know, just to check out basically uh, what we're looking at, uh, as per whole series, I'll just show you the uh, cars that are included in this one, so here they are, so we've got, as you can see, uh, on the, um, Left side here, we've got uh, four American uh, American muscle muscle cars. So um, the, when I found these, the whole series was on here, but um, literally hours later, probably most definitely a couple of days later, which is when I revisited, uh, we were talking about uh, maybe three stain on the pegs. Seemingly, at least where I bought these, the one that is the peg warmer would be surprisingly the El Camino, which is a really cool cast. I uh, decided not to pick it up because I've got a variety of different variations already of this one. Uh, other one that uh, was left on the pegs would be, uh, there was one Shelby GT500, a couple uh, El Caminos and one GT500. All the other ones were gone. Um, I did briefly think about picking up the, the Camino as well as the Firebird, but uh, decided to stick with the essentials. So on the right side, that's where it gets interesting. As you can see, we've got two JDM cars that are actually not so retro, at least in my sense. And we've got two Brazilian cars, the Charger that we just checked out, as well as the Volkswagen SP1. There's a really nice Spectra Flame Green. Honestly, it's an interesting car. It's a good looking car, but it's not a car that I collect every variation of. I have one mainline variation the uh, red with the uh, light blue and white stripe and that's the only one that I'm going to be keeping in the collection didn't really feel like paying uh, well five bucks basically which uh, they come up uh, to up here in Canada so um, 
yeah, basically, um, yeah, we'll check out the other two that I picked up, which you can probably guess which ones they are. Um, and a quick note as well, I noticed that these cards are really the same same size as a mainline card. I don't know if it's me that's maybe not getting. I didn't pull up. I didn't pull out another um, uh, one of the first series. Um, but I get the feeling that the cards are smaller and also not as robust if we're talking about the type of cardboard used. But uh, I don't know. It may be just an illusion or something, or maybe me not remembering correctly. Either way, I mean. If I'm not mistaken, the first series is also a buck more expensive, so I'm not going to complain about that. So I don't mind if they reduce uh, packaging and uh, also reduce the price. So second one, uh, very happy to be able to pick up this cast. Uh, we're talking about the S14A uh, Nissan Silvia in drift spec. Now, I believe this is only the second release of this specific version of the S14 cast with the uh, missing front bumper, exposed intercooler. You'll notice the uh, front light application is uh, not great. Uh, lights are a little bit too high up, at least I find. But you know, the chrome, uh, chrome base does lend itself well to the intercooler. You've got the hot ones in uh, two-tone uh, Purple for front and chrome for the rear. Big wing on the back. Uh, nice tampo work on the back though on this S14. And uh, the big ultra hot script with the uh, chrome interior and the Spectra Flame purple. Pretty darn nice cast. Wheels work well for a drift car. I mean, this works, you know. Definitely like it. Happy to have it. Yeah, the only other version of this cast I believe was in the ID line. Which, uh, yeah, were almost never available anywhere. So, yeah, happy to have that one. Love my Nissan, so there you go. And the one that's probably going to be the hardest to find. And to me, also, the star of the that this wave. The Civic Si EK um, works really well. In the ultra hot, uh, in ultra hot guys, um, I don't know. It's kind of like very, very early two uh, thousands as a styling. Ultra hot wheels work kind of well, also with the flashy paint job. That's very reminiscent of like, uh, you know, the hot import nights and uh, whatnot from uh, two thousand two, two thousand three, or even earlier. Uh, and which is also when this Wing West Kiss, wing, Wings West kit was all the rage. Now, as uh, we've seen on the mainline releases, or the at least the revamp version of these, uh, first in blue, then in black. Uh, it's got the full tampo work front and back. But in addition, since we're talking about an ultra hot, it's got the Spectra Flame blue paint as well as the groovy graphics all over. Well, not on the roof, but, you know, hood and side. So we've got four tempo passes, uh, five tempo passes, actually, on this one. Uh, the rest of the cast is pretty much exactly the same as you would find in the main line. We're really talking about, the, the uh, you know, a paint job, pretty much. And, of course, the infamous Ultra Hot Wheels. But this is definitely my favorite out of the bunch. Uh, close second being that S14. Um, all right, next up. Um, I did stumble upon also um, a fairly full, I believe pretty much a full set of um, the, I believe, latest wave of Matchbox Collector Series. The only one I really wanted out of this was the following. This very nice Chevy C10 long bed, fully patinated with the uh, rubber tires and uh, opening hood. Uh, this is pretty cool because I do have the um, super fast version of this truck. Actually, I have yeah, a moving parts and uh, that, that I'm actually, it's up for trade, as well as uh, the black with uh, real rider style wheels, uh, but it's a short bed, so not the same truck as this. Now this has 
wood style bed, which I find really cool. And yeah, as mentioned, it's all rusty, musty, and dusty. Full tampa work on the front. Wheel style works really well. Uh, this is a wheel style that uh, does come back periodically for premiums, especially on older cars. Um, and yeah, here's your rear. Again, full tampa work. Nicely patinated. Um, I like the white bumpers also. It does have a white base, as you can vaguely see here. So that lends itself well because the work trucks used to have white bumpers. So you know, I powder coated. So very nice. I mean, all the details are there, you know. Uh, door handles are, it's kind of hard to see in this light. Again, apologies for the poor light quality, but you know, the door handles and all the little details on the B pillar here, they're all done in uh, kind of like a silverish gray. So really all the details are there. You got a little matchbox script on the door there. And uh, it's got a good stance, low profile tires. You know, obviously the white uh, exhaust there is, you know, kind of an eyesore. But I mean, nothing a little silver sharpie can't fix. Although, and I do tend to open these, honestly. Card art's really cool. Like, I really like the artwork on this. Let's try and get it sideways. But, you know, really cool artwork. But at the same time, as soon as you open, I mean, one, it's half, it's half hidden by the bubble and the truck itself. And two, well... If you open it, well, the card's pretty much scrapped unless you use, uh, you know, nail polish remover or whatever, which it probably won't do. And I mean, it comes with a collector box, so it's easy. It's easier for storage as well. I'll probably crack this one open eventually, anyways. So, but yeah, very cool with the box room and the collector box, reminiscent of the, uh, you know, the Lesney days and the original Superfast and whatnot. So, I'm pretty happy about uh, about this one, and I'm happy because. Um, I am a big fan of vehicle, uh, like patina vehicles, and I was really curious to pick it up and compare it to uh, an older release, green light release, um, also Chevy long bed, but not the same generation of truck, but it's this one, uh, from, uh, Independence Day. So, uh, I believe I've showcased this one before. Um, maybe in a truck uh, showcase video that I've done in the past, but it, this is a generation following, so 71 as opposed to uh, 64. Um, I mean, you know, kind of like the same color on the body, you know, but I mean, I find they look pretty cool side by side, you know, two generations, they're consecutive, and, uh, you know, they kind of, kind of go well together, you know, and, you know, size-wise, I mean seems to be pretty much the same scale both have opening hoods both have rubber tires mind you the green light does have a metal base i believe yeah definitely it does but uh yeah i find that's pretty cool uh definitely very cool and uh, the last thing i picked up and i actually thought i'd do a little unboxing of this was uh one of the many many new three packs basically so um you can already see exactly why I would have gotten this. This colorway of the Celica I was really looking forward to finding. There were two three packs with this in it. The other one had um, car two, the two other cars I was more or less interested in. I mean, there was uh, the Celica. There was also a, another Fantasy cast, not the same one as this, which honestly that's going to be for my daughter. Uh, but instead of uh, the nice uh, Camaro convertible that you see here, um, it was actually a um, uh, the Broken Promises Mod Rod. And Mod Rod is definitely a casting I like, uh, that I have a favorite variation of, but that I do not collect uh, actively. So I thought I'd pull out uh, my uh, trusty... Uh, uh, multi-pack opener same tool that uh, Tyrone from uh, building the ultimate ma matchbox collection uses the infamous butter knife I'll just get this bad boy open we'll check this uh, Celica cast and at the same time why not the Camaro we'll check that out 
This is definitely the best way to open a three pack. Nice clean opening on the side. Pull these out. And uh, start with the bad. You know, this kind of looks like a. What's the name of this one again? This is the Maximum Leeway. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a dirt uh, dirt racer. Kind of cool, plastic body, black painted metal base. Uh, you got the uh, staggered steelies, which will make great wheels to swap on a muscle car or some type of car that has a less than desirable wheel, staggered wheel setup. But all in all, this is going to be for the track for my daughter because based on the metal base plastic body i'm pretty sure this thing is pretty darn fast on the track but yeah looks pretty cool you know you got some uh some uh nice uh nice well you know, pretty nice graphics on it so it's pretty groovy you know it gives it a really race look and uh, uh yeah well it's not bad it's not a bad cast it's just not not something that really interests me so yeah this is going to be for my daughter's uh what's becoming to be a massive hot wheel stash if we're talking about fantasy cast that she can use on her track so the second one would be this very nice color wave of the uh was it 68 69 camaro i like the you know tuxedo black with the uh white stripes uh, full side detail which is great and I'm probably going to give this one the same type of treatment that I gave to the uh, recently released uh, 69 coupe um, so you know just add some uh, silver detailing kind of like this basically it's got the same wheel set up mind you I changed these to gold uh, and then the front is not exactly the same. It's not the same grill as uh, 68 has the hideaway headlights. Whereas, as you can see through the detailing, the 69 has the round ones. So, yeah, we're going to probably make a convertible twin. Different color, different livery. But, uh, yeah, that'll be a little project there. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool, cool. So that's what's probably gonna look like after. Kind of weird though, because the exhausts on this one are not uh, as obvious as on the, the 69. It seems like it'd be a twin dual exit exhaust. Since the base is gray, it's gonna be harder to make it pop, but uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. And, uh, yeah, so let's uh, finish off by checking out the reason why I bought this 3-pack, which would be, oh, this beauty right here. Oh, my. So this is really reminiscent of liv uh, livery run-in period. Obviously, you got the number 22 since this is a 2022 multi-pack exclusive. Uh, but, yeah, the headlights, as you can see, are part of the glass portion, which is awesome. It's not as visible on um, on uh, the previous uh, metallic colored releases with the black or chrome base as opposed to the gray base here and the solid color, which really makes the uh, front grille pop and light uh, covers pop a little bit more. Great livery. It's just very, like, Japanese nostalgic car. And the rear, we've got some black plastic that's part of the interior that actually lends itself to the light portion. Or the, yeah, the light portion. So this is the first uh, loose version that I'm going to have of this cast. And by far my favorite livery. So, you know, side tampos, hood tampos. And since the lights are already there, well, it doesn't really need anything. I mean, maybe a, just a touch of a, touch of color, touch of red on the uh, real lights, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's got the cool uh, chrome-lipped steelies, which is one of the best mainline wheels. 
you know, all diecast brands combined. In my opinion, it looks great on everything. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to have that. Mind you, I did spot the blue KDR30 in 10 packs while I was uh, hunting, but man, have prices increased on Hot Wheels. This is at uh, Walmart, and uh, we're talking about $8.97 Canadian for a three pack and $18.97 for a, for a, a nine pack, which I find ludicrous. I mean, already paying the equivalent of three bucks a car for one that I more or less wanted and that I would have been able to pick up for two dollars and some cents uh, depending where it's bought if we're talking about the black Camaro and a fantasy cast that I absolutely didn't want I mean literally we're probably talking about the um, the Celica costing me the equivalent of six to seven dollars which look I mean it is what it is too bad, you know, but that's the way things are going. This hobby is getting more, more and more expensive. So definitely cutting back on, um, on buying, uh, you know, on buying new, uh, new stuff. Unless I really wanted, as you probably noticed, uh, the haul videos are getting lesser and uh, lesser and lesser. If we're talking about the quantity, and uh, we're gonna go aim for quality, uh, quality instead. So yeah, on that, uh, I will let you go. So hopefully you enjoyed this little showcase. Uh, if you did, uh, don't hesitate to leave this video a thumbs up. Uh, comment uh, your feedback, your thoughts down below. And um, subscribe uh, to be notified of uh, future uploads on my behalf. Alright, I'll uh, wish you guys happy hunting. And um, I'll catch you on the next uh, showcase. Take care. Bye-bye.